Great quarter. Yeah, 11 0. They have outscored their adversaries. Looking to add to it. Lazar to the cup for two. Carly Lazar. Strong with it. Oh, how about that? I'm all a big well for right. Going back to Gilpin and it's fine. A grand slam. Welcome into another edition of the season preview here on the Carlo Sports Network. Sean Myers joined by Alan Duda entering his fourth season guiding the Carlo women's soccer team. Alan, thank you for doing this once again. Good to talk to you. Oh, thank you for having me. I know that the 2020 season was an interesting one for everyone involved, very unique circumstances. How did you evaluate that 2020 season looking back on it? Looking back at it, I think it was a successful season. We got all of our games in, which not many teams did, so that was a win for us. Um, missing playoffs hurt us a little bit, but I think uh, playing all the games was a, a key for us. We saw a lot of highs and a lot of lows last year. Your team had some shining moments and some disappointing ones. I think we saw both in one particular match against Point Park, and I know that's always a big one. Your team was up 3 nothing at the half. You ended up losing it 4-3. to What can your team learn from a game like that? I think from that, we have learned not to quit. Even if we're up 2-3-0, we know we need to finish the game. Uh, we did not finish that game, so that's, that's still stuck in their heads. I think it's going to help us through the season. There's... Uh, there's certainly some big differences between the offseason heading into 2020's campaign and this offseason. A little bit more normalcy, I would say. So what have been the biggest differences in terms of what you've been able to do to prepare the girls? I think last year, we, during that, the hard times that we had, we had to put a lot of the players in pods. So it was tough to get everyone together as one unit. This year, we've been able to do that. Uh, the team camaraderie, the uh, team bonding has been much better this year. Carlo has already played a couple of matches this season. You guys got a nice opportunity to go down south to Florida, which I'm sure was very nice, although temperatures here are probably not too much different at this time of year. I know that the, the outcomes are kind of lopsided, but how did the team benefit from that experience? Um, I think playing in that heat helped us. Um, we're not going to have heat like that here, hopefully, but uh, it seems the level that they have in the, the Sun Conference uh, really it's good showing us that we need to step up to be at that level. So I think that was a huge plus for us. I know when I've interviewed you the last couple of years prior to the campaign, you told me you wanted to see a patient approach for your team. What do you look for this year for the team's style of play? Still patient, um, composure, keeping hold of the ball. Um, possession is going to be key for us. Build out of the back. You had three seniors on last year's roster, one of whom decided to come back and Corey Murray using her extra eligibility. So you lost just two players to graduation. They were key ones, of course, Alex Schwab, or Alexis Schwab and Rachel Toogood. So what will you miss about those two? I think their leadership, uh, mostly. Uh, Alexa was strong for us up top, uh, so we'll miss some of those goals from her. Uh, Rachel Toogood was uh, high energy and she really sparked the team. So definitely going to miss those, but only losing two players is uh, going to benefit us this year. Yeah, because that means you have a lot of players coming back, some real key returners. When you look at this group, who are some players that really stand out? Uh, Haley Huber stands out, Allison McLaughlin. We look for big things from her and Natalie DiGiorno. Um, yeah, quite a few players that I think will definitely help and contribute this year. In terms of the back end, you have three goalkeepers all who return, and I know that there was a little bit of a rotation last year. What's the plan this year in that? Um, looking for them to challenge each other. Um, uh, if we need to rotate, we will, but looking for that, you know, that goalkeeper to stand out, own up to the team, and want to be there. You had five freshmen. You also have some new players via transfer, so the numbers are even better right. than a year ago. Amongst the newcomers, what have you seen so far? Uh, they fit in real well with this group, which uh, I think is key for us. Uh, everyone getting along and playing together. Uh, the, the new players and the transfers will contribute this year. I think maybe one of the benefits of an expanded roster size is you get to have a reserves team this year, which is to an extent sort of like a JV opportunity for some players to get into games that maybe wouldn't with, with the regular team. What are the objectives for that squad? 
Um, to develop a little bit. Um, some players coming in, especially uh, first years, they might not be at the level we need them to be. This gives them an opportunity to play, get some experience, and hopefully play at the, uh, the varsity level. I know coaches pay attention to the preseason poll, maybe don't necessarily buy into the rankings, but they're, they're cognizant of it. Mm -hmm. Carlo is voted eighth out of the 12 teams in the River States Conference. So when you look at that, how do you kind of gauge the expectations and goals that you have compared to those expectations from outside of the program? Yeah, I mean, as a coach, yeah, we don't look at that too much, but the players definitely look at it. I think it's going to drive them to prove people wrong that we are better than an eight seed. Um, but I, I just think it's going to be a driving force for us moving forward. There's some really talented teams in this River States Conference. When you look at the landscape overall of the RSC, what do you see? Uh, it's tough to say because everyone's, uh, you don't know how everyone's recruiting, who's coming back, but it is a tough conference. We um, There's some really good teams in our conference. So just hoping we can match up with most of the teams in our conference and hopefully get a few wins. And a year ago, all you saw was conference opponents. This year, as we mentioned, it's a little bit more normal. You get to play a, a handful of non-conference matchups. What will that do to help this team? I, I think it's going to help us develop more. Uh, seeing teams outside of the conference, they have different style of play. Uh, so just learning how to defend those, how to attack. So uh, it's good to see other teams outside of the conference. Two of your assistants return with Aaron Cook and Rachel Flory back in the mix. You also added a new assistant to the coaching staff and Don Opperman. How do you envision their roles and how do you delegate the responsibilities to those assistants? Yeah, I mean, Rachel's been, she was a player with the team for a couple of years and uh, bringing her back as a coach is going to benefit us, uh, especially defensively. She was a center back for us, so she's been helping quite a bit with uh, some of the new players and how we play in the back. Uh, Aaron Cook is a goalkeeper coach. She'll be helping a lot with the reserve team as well. Uh, Don Ackerman uh, will be bringing him in and to help with the offensive attack. So uh, I think it's, been, it's a good group, good mix that we have on the coaching staff. Alan, I do so many different sporting events here at Carlo, and I always see you present at them, in addition to your responsibilities as a dual soccer head coach now with both the men and the women. What's your favorite part of being involved with Carlo University? I think the atmosphere is just a family atmosphere. Uh, everyone's close knit. Uh, everyone knows each other by name. It's just, uh, it really is a good place to work at. You know, I don't even think it's work, it's, it's fun working, it really is. Well, we're certainly hoping for a fun 2021 campaign for the women here at Carlo. Thank you so much for doing this. Uh, thank you. And we continue here on the Celtics season preview for 2021 Carlo women's soccer. I'm now joined by a senior midfielder and defenseman, Allison McLaughlin. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? I'm doing terrific. And I, I'm hoping that this is going to be a terrific season for Carlo as well. You have a lot of players back. You're one of the veterans on this team. Four years now at the program. How have you grown and evolved as a player throughout your time here? Um, I think that one of the big things was just that, you know, when I came in as a freshman, I feel like I really didn't have, you know, as much responsibility on the team. But now I just think that because I'm older that, you know, I've taken a lot more responsibility and, you know, having the team together and everything. So probably the responsibility has changed. And another thing that's changed is the off-season with some of the guidelines loosened from a year ago. So how much of a difference has there been in the off-season last year compared to this year? You know, I really think that one of the things is that last year we weren't, you know, able to be together as a team. We were all split up. And now I feel that this year we're just getting along and going to get to know each other a lot better because we're able to be together and practice as a team. That's a good transition to the next question. What team building activities have the Celtics done, whether it be this offseason or throughout your time here, to try to get a little bit closer? Um, I know that one big thing for us is we were just in Miami, you know, we got you know a whole bunch of time to spend with each other. But I think that another thing is that we kind of still communicate with each other in the offseason. So like over the summer, you know, whether it's catching up or talking, and I think that just helps to make the bond better. And so many of the players are local. You're from the key sport, but I know so many came from the WPIAL. I'm sure that helps that you have a similar background. Yeah, right, because you can, you know, talk about what high schools you played against and stuff like that, so. Did you play against any of your teammates when you were in high school? Um, I don't think any of them, no. I think we might have scrimmaged a couple, but there was never any, like, conference games or anything. We mentioned you're a senior, so you have three years to, to base this on. What has been your favorite moment thus far here at Carlo? My favorite moment? 
Um, I mean, winning's always a plus, but uh, I don't know. I think one of my favorite moments is just, honestly, anytime we go out to dinner as a team, you know, after the game, whether we lost or we won, you know, I think that it just gives time to reflect and it really brings us all together. Let's talk about team goals here in 2021, as well as your individual goals. What do you have in mind? Um, I think that as a team goal, I think that, you know, because of last year with COVID and everything, I think that a team goal was probably just to get to know each other better and be able to, you know, connect on the field in a way that we maybe weren't last year. And I think that for me personally, just, you know, being an upperclassman now and, you know, taking on the responsibility to kind of be a leader and stuff, I think that, you know, I could work on that this season, so it's going to be a big thing for me. What match or maybe matches are you most looking forward to this year? Um, definitely the Point Park game. I mean, it's always a big thing. It's been a big thing since I was a freshman, so probably that one. And I'm sure there's probably a little bit of a sour taste in your mouth from the match last year that you guys were up and then ultimately could not close out. Yeah, that was not good, especially winning prior years, so it was not a good feeling. Uh, we have a beautiful stadium right behind us here, Highmark Stadium, but your team also plays at the Montour Junction. So how do those venues compare to one another, and do you prefer one? Um, definitely Highmark over anything, you know. Because I like, of the view, right? Yeah, right. But I like being in the spotlight, you know, and playing at Highmark makes it feel like, you know, better than Montour. Because at Montour, there's not really stands or anything. It's not like there's a stadium. It's kind of just a field. And I feel like, you know, more people also come to watch at Highmark than, you know, especially the commute all the way out there. What are some of the best qualities of your head coach, Alan Duda? There's a lot. I mean, I could go on and on. But um, probably that just he makes everyone feel welcome. You know what I mean? He's not, you know, we do everything as a team. And he's very really big on team bonding. And I think it's really appreciated by everyone that he gives an effort, you know, equally to everyone. It's not that just he focuses on one thing or one person. So. Final thing for you, fill in the blank. This season will be a success if... Uh, probably if we communicate a lot. Communication's key, that's for sure. And is that something you guys have worked on? Yeah, yeah, it's a very big thing. Well, her hopefully it pays off this season and the Celtics have a great year. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. That's Allison McLaughlin, one of the seniors here on the season preview. We roll along here on the Celtics season preview 2021 women's soccer. I'm now joined by junior Haley Huber. How are you doing today? I'm good. A year ago, you were better than good for the Celtics. You led the team in scoring. You had seven goals and 17 points. What were the biggest keys to your scoring success? Um, just the practice that I did in the off season, probably like the confidence. You have to have the confidence. And um, whenever you are going to like score a goal, I would say the biggest thing is to learn how to calm yourself down. You have like a split second to figure out where you're going to place the ball and like I think that's the biggest thing with the confidence and calming yourself down. I talked to you a year ago for this season preview and at that point you were still working your way back from an injury that ended your 2019 season. So how important was it to see that success last year and where do you think you are physically now compared to where you were a year ago? Um, it, it was important for me to have a good year because uh, mentally just to know that like you know, I am back and I can do well. Like, you always wonder in the back of your head, am I going to be the same player? Am I going to be better? Um, and physically, this year I was able to start in the gym in the winter instead of, um, like, a delayed. I didn't get to start, like, working out and um, doing stuff in the off season until later towards summer. I know you just mentioned you, you were able to get in the gym a lot, but what has been the areas of focus for your game throughout this past off season? Um, definitely uh, to continue to score goals, so um, just mainly working on that and speed. You had the opportunity to take a really nice trip down to Florida in mid-August. What was the best part of that experience? Uh, the team bonding experience was the best part, being on the beach together, going out. We went to um, South Beach. We got to just enjoy the time together. Um, and it was just a great opportunity, regardless of the outcome, it was a good opportunity to go down there and play soccer. It's always um, good to get more experience on the field. And a nice tan as well, I would yep. say. <laughs> what goals do you have individually and as a team for this season? Um, as a team, it's always you know to win the conference. Um, and individually, uh, last year I made the um, – second team all conference and uh, this year I want to make the first team you know it's always a goal to be at the top of the list and to keep scoring more goals. 
when you look at some of your teammates, who do you think maybe will have a breakthrough season? Um, I think Allison uh, will actually be a, a big one for that because uh, she was recruited originally like for as an offensive player, and, and like the last couple years she was playing defense. So uh, she's been moved up, and I think that she'll really help with our scoring capabilities. There's a number of seniors on this squad. It's, it's a veteran group. Who have been some of the players who've taken on the leadership roles? Um, Allison's always a big presence. Uh, Michaela, um, Abby, of course, with her speed on the outside. Um, and Natalie, starting as a freshman, she's had a couple years of experience. So I think, I think our midfield will uh, be a big presence and it'll be strong. Lastly, what's the best part of playing at Carlo? Um, just the people here. My, they're all my best friends, and it's nice to be with them. I, I get to be with them every day. And getting to play at Highmark, too, as our home field, and being in the city, I like being in the city. So, And they have a great nursing program, that's what I Well, thank you for. so much for doing this. We appreciate the time. Good luck heading into the regular season. Thank you for having me. That's Haley Uber here on the season preview.